Hey, Radu here. Let's talk about resources in Microsoft Project. We'll see why use them in the first place, what types of resources we have in Project and also how to allocate them. Let's start. I think that every plan that we make in Project has to answer two key questions. The first one is uh, what needs to be done in this project. And even though this is like a very general project and not very clear, it's like a random construction project, from my perspective, it's pretty clear we have to have a project to dig stuff and to build stuff. You know, so that's pretty clear for us what we need to do in this project. The second key question is what do I need to get this done? And honestly, this is not very clear for me right now because I don't know what do I need uh, for project uh, authorization. I don't know how I'm going to do the digging and also how with whom I'm going to build stuff. Okay, this second part of what do I need? is where resources come into play. So let's talk about resources. Uh, we'll, you'll find them in the resource sheet. We have the task, uh, how it's called, the gun chart, and also the resource sheet, two separate places. Uh, and he, here is where we define the resources. You will see that defining is the first step, and afterwards, we'll also allocate the resources on task, because you, there's no point in only defining resources. If you don't plan to use them okay so uh, first of all I'm gonna look at this column here because this is very important we'll see that we have three types of resources in project now I'm gonna switch back to the tasks and to the gun chart and look at this for the project in and authorization I suppose that I need money for this digging stuff maybe I need like equipment and whatever someone with a shovel you know and uh, for this part, I will also need like materials because you cannot build stuff out of nowhere. You need concrete and bricks and whatever, you know? So think about these uh, examples here. Now, getting back to the resources, I'm gonna look at uh, these three. So the, with the work resource, think about it like uh, the people that are working, that are paid by the hour, or the uh, equipment that is working that is also paid by the hour. For example, if you want to dig stuff, you probably have to bring up excavator or something like that, and you'll have to pay it by the hour. So this is like the work resource. And in our case, I'm gonna, I'm having a, an excavator and I know that this excavator can work like eight hours a day. This is what the maximum, um, uh, the maximum column means and of course this excavator uh, is also tied to the calendar because if the calendar is like eight hours a day maximum means eight hours a day if i switch this from standard to uh, 24 hours then the excavator can work around the clock now this is what max is standard rate okay what's the amount of lay per hour it is like 100 lay was the overtime rate, you know? So this, uh, this, these are a, a few uh, columns that I have here. For example, in my case, it's like 120 because I have to pay extra if the excavator works more than uh, the standard number of hours. I also have the cost per use. And I'm not sure what's your experience in construction, for example, but there are some uh, machines uh, that have a cost just to get there, you know? In this case, for the excavator to come to my uh, location, I have to pay like 200 lay just to get there. Uh, the accrue column, which is very complicated for me to pronounce my Romanian English, uh, means the way the money is spent. For example, if this excavator works like for one week and um, I have like a total cost of 1,000, whatever, one number of, uh, uh, of lay, uh, I will also see uh, if I if I let this to accrue the money will be spent as the hours get worked you know it's like a very linear progression of the way the money gets spent if this changes to end then the money gets spent at the end after I finish the work then the money gets spent in the reports if I do it at the start the money is like paid in advance uh, this is what it uh, it means. So the first type of resource is this one the work resource and of course I can have Machines like excavator. I can also have like people for example, and I, I know that I Have a team of five people that will be working for this, you know, like manual labor workers and what I'm gonna do here like um, a little bit different is that I'm gonna um, put the max to 500% 
This will tell project that I have a team of five people that can be allocated to, to this. Of course, standard over time cost per use. They are the same. And of course, the calendar is important in the way we allocate and the way we'll, we're going to see the overall allocation of, uh, for this project. Now, this was the first um, example, like the first type of resource. The second one is the material. I'm not sure why I started from the bottom up, but what the, uh, the second one is material. Now, this is pretty clear. Something like I need concrete, I need bricks, I need whatever. You know, this is pretty standard. So, for example, I'm going to say I'm using concrete and quick mention something like uh, this is for cubic meters or for pounds or whatever i can have like a description here but the standard rate is per unit i'm gonna say um is like 200 lei and whatever i don't have any cost per use because i negotiated properly and that's kind of it material is pretty simple it's like i need concrete i need iron i need whatever you know it's pretty standard i have a specific cost per unit and I'm going to allocate as many units as I need. The third one actually is like the first one if I look at it from the top down like like it's normal. The fourth uh, the the last one is like cost and this is very weird because the cost resource I'm going to have it like I'm going to call it money. <laughs> and I'm going to see that I don't have a maximum, I don't have a standard rate, I don't have anything because this somehow bypasses uh, the calculation. So in this case, I'm going to see it uh, right after, uh, after like a few more seconds. Uh, when I allocate resources, project calculates the cost. So if I'm saying that I need five people to work like five days, it will try to calculate the cost based on the rate per hour. But if I'm going to use the cost resource, I just allocate the cost directly. I'm going to say this is cost this cost like this. I don't I no longer need a product to calculate this for me. So this is what you have work something like people or equipment or machines that are working on an hourly basic basis uh, materials and also cost resources. The next step obviously is to allocate them. Let's get back to the list of tasks here. So I have uh, three tasks and I want to allocate resources. I know that for the project and authorization, I just need money. I don't need anything else. So I'm going to use the assign resources option. So I can use this option here. This is what I typically use. Or if I double click and go into the task information, I also have resources over there. You know, so both ways are, are okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to use assign resources is more compact. I'm going to say I need uh, money for this. How much money I need, like this much money, 5,000, whatever, assign. And also see now that I have a cost of 5,000 lei. If I look at, um, at the view and let's switch to the cost table, this will go up and influence the project cost. You know, this is the, the cool thing about resources that, that by assigning resources, I can also get uh, to a cost of the project in hours or in money in this in this case let's go back into the entry yeah so back here i need this for the project i need for the digging i'm gonna allocate this excavator like 100 uh, percent so in this case let me just escape i cannot write here okay you're gonna in the first case i could edit the cost because it was a cost resource but in this case i'm going to say just percentage and click assign and it automatically calculated that i need 8000 lei for this excavator to work on this digging uh, task the cool thing or the funny thing is what happens when i change the allocation so right now is that uh, in if i look at this uh, the task has the duration of 10 days I allocated one excavator 100%. I'm going to change this allocation. Let's go into assign resources and change it to 50% and click OK. I will see that the duration has doubled okay? because 
I no longer could use that excavator uh, for the entire day, I could only use it half a day and project decided that this will make the task longer. I can go into this option here and I can make, uh, I can reduce the number of hours if I want to keep the duration the same. What I wanted to see here is that changing the allocation, the initial allocation will impact the duration or the number of hours that need to be worked on this project, okay? On this task, uh, more specifically, just, just like a quick mention. Now, to build stuff, I also need to have people and I'm gonna as allocate, uh, let's assign resources here, and I'm, I'm gonna allocate, uh, let's say the worker, I'm gonna allocate six people. I know that I only have five, but I want to have six and click assign, and I will see this red icon here because I allocated more that I, that I have at my disposal. That's what we do here in the resources sheet. We define the resources that we have on this project and then we use it in the tasks. And when we go over the top, if you have over allocations, they will be uh, shown, you know, we'll see them here in the in the gun so this is what you should know about resources in project they answer the question of what do i need uh, for this project we define them here in the resources sheet we assign them on tasks and the cool thing is that project uh, goes from there and calculates a lot of stuff for us and we can also we can also see them uh, the way the information that is gets calculated in the dashboards in the report section in project for example let's have like a project overview this is not very helpful i'm going to try again and use maybe the cost overview to see what's like the total cost in the project so it's a very cool thing that i just put the i just input the data and then project automatically gives it for me in a visual way or can also uh, use the table that i have over there to to see relevant data from my project that was kind of it. Hope it was useful. If yes, I won't, I won't mind if you click the like button. If you want more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.